So in order for a frost layer to happen, the Thames has to be frozen solid. It has to be thick ice and it has to last for a certain amount of time. It takes a while to set up and it takes a time to pack down. And what they are is part fun fair, part carnival, part sales opportunity. So they're kind of an extension of the London street onto the ice. So the first time we know about people making their own entertainment on the ice is 1309 and people set a fire at that point and there were some organised games. But that doesn't become what we know as a frost fair until 1608. The Thames froze over about 23 times between the 12th century and 1814 when the final frost fair takes place. It's only a small portion of the Thames that freezes and it tends to be the area around London Bridge. So the old London Bridge is a really substantial structure. It's got buildings on top of it and it has 20 piers. London Bridge slows the flow of the Thames and the slower the river flows, the more likely it is to freeze. So the frost fairs are really an unusual place and you could see almost anything. In 1814 you might have seen an elephant being walked across by Blackfriars Bridge. There are also things like skittles, games, entertainments of all kinds. You'd have things like barges frozen into the ice which would be used as a temporary stage and people would perform, orate, whatever they could think of that they thought might be a great entertainment and might get people to give them money. You also have basically a quite a established street of retailers. Uh, a lot of them are pubs, a lot of them are selling food. The drinks and foods that they would have sold would have been things like gin, they would have been things like gingerbread, there would have been a lot of beer consumed on the ice. It's a party atmosphere. So in the Museum of London collections you'll find printed keepsakes that were bought from printers who set up on the ice. The Museum of London collections have all kinds of things to do with the frost fairs. The prints are really beautiful and give us a great visual record of what the frost fairs would have looked like. Some of them are more honest and some of them are more comic interpretations. One of the most extraordinary things we have, a really rare survival, is a piece of gingerbread that was sold at the final frost fair in 1814. So the final frost fair took place between the 1st and the 5th of February 1814 and we've got an amazing little thing in the collection. It's just a piece of paper really, but it's a note from A. Thor to J. Frost giving him notice to quit the Thames. And that marks the end of the frost fairs.